I don't understand why it's... Oh, hi. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the It's Live live show. I'm Rodney Smith. This is the Watch It Play channel. And I have no idea if this is working. So we have to just... I have to do the thing I never want to do, but I have to check. I have to check. Okay, it says we're getting a bad stream right now. Uh, it may not be buffering enough for you guys to view it in real time. That's what it's telling me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Why is everything so hard? <sighs> okay, I'm just going to look at the chat for a second. As soon as everyone tells me things are fine, then I will assume things are... F just tell me things are fine even if they aren't, please. That would be, that'd be so awesome of you. Um, and then, then we'll, we'll get this, whatever this is, started. Okay, uh, let me see. Is the chat even... Oh, my goodness. Oh, good. I'm getting feedback from my own audio. <sighs> okay. Chat. It's working. Okay, people can... Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Now let's officially start. Can we just go back and start over? We can't. That's not an option. All right. I've got so many things I want to talk to you about here. Uh, welcome again if you're just joining me. I hope you're just joining me now and weren't here earlier when things were not as smooth as they're going to be from this point forward. But uh, I have a few things I want to tell you about. One of them is, <laughs> believe it or not, I was going to announce that I want to do these live shows more regularly because they're so much fun. Um, and uh, I, part of that, part of doing it more regularly is, is that it will help me get the operation set up a little more easily each time in theory, even though I've had lots of practice already doing this. But I'm thinking if I do it on a more regular basis, then it's something that people can kind of plan for and schedule for and... Casey Pearson, thank you so much for the super chat and the dancing. What is that? It looks like a pear or something in the chat. <laughs> that is very kind of you. Really appreciate the, the tip. Makes me feel a little, little, uh, little better about myself right now. Thank you. I, I don't deserve it. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, I'd like to do this more often. I don't know, bi-weekly? I think bi-weekly would be nice. I think weekly would kill me, but bi-weekly might be possible. And uh, I think Wednesday evenings like this, around this time. Now, I know that some people are not going to be available at this time every time. Um, unfortunately, we have, not unfortunately, fortunately, we have viewers from all over the place. And right now, some of you are in bed, sleeping. But that's okay. You can watch the live show afterwards. But I'd love to make, be able to create a period of time that you can kind of plan for. So, uh, yeah, that is, that is one of the things I wanted to announce. I think I'm, I'm ready to do this on a more regular basis. We'll see how this one goes. You can tell me at the end if you want more of this or just a whole lot less of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, my idea with the live show is, is to sort of stick to 60 minutes, kind of have it jam-packed, full of stuff, and then be done. And that way, also, if you're watching it after the fact, you know, it's an hour. It's still kind of, you know, easy breezy. It's an hour easy breezy. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> this won't be something that you're not you don't necessarily need to have the video, so I suppose you could listen to the live show if you wanted to. No, we do a lot of stuff on video here in the live show, so you'd, you'd probably miss out if you were just listening to it in audio. But anyway, that's, that's the plan, to stick to around 60 minutes. And during that time, I'm going to try to answer as many of your questions as you might have. I have other things planned as well, but if you would like to ask a question during the live show, you can do it by putting your question with the word QUESTION in all caps, and then your question. Your question doesn't have to be in all caps, just the word QUESTION at the... You'll figure it out. Um, and I have some other questions also uh, that I, uh, from the Board Game Geek Guild, the Watch It Played Board Game Geek Guild. Uh, I usually post there a couple of days before the live show and just say, hey, I'm doing a live show, which means technically, you know, I should have lots of time to prepare for these things in advance, you'd think. Uh, and I also collect some questions there. So I have some of those preloaded and ready to go, and I'll try to get to as many of those as possible as well. So, all right, <laughs> we are going to, uh, with those announcements out of the way, let's get into it. Um, oh! I wanted to mention one thing uh, quickly. I, I do have a promo store. Uh, I, I don't know if many of you know it or don't know it, but it's over on PodPledge. There's a link to it in the description of this video, I think. Oh, gosh, is there? I don't know. I hope so. If there is, someone tell me in the chat if there is. <laughs> anyway, you can go there. You can pick up promos that we released during previous fundraisers. I still have some left over, and there's one that you might like there. You can pick it up, and all the money comes back to support the show, which is really helpful. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, oh, I, I, will, I will mention the Super Chat here that, that Casey also uh, uh, donated to. Super Chat's one of the buttons, there's a little dollar sign when you post a comment. If you want to, you can throw a little tip in the tip jar is what I like to think of it as. It's a little way of saying thank you financially, I guess, for the shenanigans that go on here. And uh, there's also, I think, stickers now or something. I got a notification from YouTube that there's stickers. I don't know if I have to create them or how that works. I'll figure it out. Maybe we'll have some stickers in the in the future on this live thing, if we ever do one of these again. 
Okay. Uh, oh, I wanted to mention uh, one other thing. Uh, I'm running a contest during this live show that we will then draw the winner of at the end of this live show. Okay? So all of you who are here now, I'm going to let you know how you enter the contest. The contest is actually for, well, okay. <laughs> I wasn't planning on getting this out yet. Um, this is, uh, here, let me, let me switch over to the other <laughs> camera for a second. Uh, yeah. So this is a, a, a goose that was made for me by um, uh, Emily Detmer, uh, who you might know from the incorrigible, the group of incorrigibles online, and uh, they're, they're all over Twitter, uh, and, and very good friends of mine, and, and always very kind and at uh, conventions. Sometimes I get little gifts from them, and Emily is super creative, made this, I'm going to call it a Canada goose, I'm assuming it's a Canadian goose, and inside there's a little pouch. In the pouch, I stored a couple of, uh, oh, I hope I didn't just kill the goose. <laughs> Goose, are you okay? Hello? Yeah, well, he'll, he'll be fine. Inside are, are a couple of decks of cards. You might have seen uh, me talk about these uh, on, on Twitter. Uh, I did a little, uh, little promo for, uh, I, oh, I lost the ability to, no, nope, there we go, focus. Uh, a little promo for um, the Magic Apple in Los Angeles. That's actually where I went and bought my first real magic trick and have sort of fallen down into that rabbit hole, uh, buying lots of magic books and tricks and all the rest of it. And uh, it sort of befriended Brent, the owner there, and he, uh, he said, hey, would you mind uh, doing a little social media push for, uh, for some of these cards that I'm offering? I said, sure, why not? So I'm not getting paid for this. There's no, no like, money changing hands here. I just sort of doing a favor for, uh, for a friend. And a little crossover of my two interests. So I'm going to be giving away uh, one deck each, and all I have to do to enter the contest is just go into the description of this video, and you should find a link there to the contest. It's going to ask for a secret word, a code word, and the code word is, what's the code word again? It is the name of the street that the Magic Apple in Los Angeles is on. So just the name. It's one word. You don't have to put the number. Just the name of the street. Maybe it's a boulevard or an avenue or cul-de-sac. I don't remember. But the point is, whatever that word is, that's what you put in for the code word. And we'll draw two winners at the end of this episode. I don't know the order. I, I figure the first name I get, I'll send the orange deck to, and the second name I'll send the, uh, the green deck to. How's that sound? Sound good? Okay. And so, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Emily, for the uh, goose. I'm going to find a, a nice prominent spot somewhere around here in the basement to, um, to put it and keep it safe. I love it. I love it very much. Always nice when people, uh, you know, give a little gifts at, at conventions. It's a fun, uh, fun thing to have happen, for sure. Actually, I have uh, another gift over here I wanted to show. This is uh, something I got at BGGCon as well. This is from Thomas. And Thomas is at TPCHID on Twitter. And uh, he made this super awesome, uh, he makes a whole bunch of these dice bags and he was giving them out. And this one I thought was uh, particularly appropriate. He picked this particular fabric for me, which was nice. Uh, I like it very much. Thank you very much. Thomas, really appreciate that. Actually, I have one more gift here while we're talking about gifts. <laughs> this, is, um, this was a, a really nice cup that I got from uh, Liz, Liz Howell, who's been on the live show or has been a, a, been a viewer of the live show in the past. And she, uh, I ran to her at uh, Spiel in Essen. And she gave me this nice card and, uh, and this mug. So I just wanted to say a public thank you to Liz for that. Really beautiful. I, let me show you. I got the, uh, so I should be able to switch over to this other camera in theory. Let's, <laughs> it's not working. It's not working. There we go. There it is. There it is. Isn't that lovely pattern? I love it. That's great. Thank you, Liz. Really cool. We're uh, big tea drinkers around here. Not really a coffee drinker. A lot of people drink coffee. I, I never got into coffee. Um, and so I've never, you know, I'll drink it socially, but I know people, lots of people are, are big, big coffee drinkers. Not me. More tea. This is the other thing I was going to show you as well. So this is another gift I got. This came from uh, Laura Davis. Uh, Laura Davis, who, who watches the show and knows that we have uh, a cat. i never really been a cat person. Um, my, my feeling was just that cats don't like me. Not that I don't really care for cats. Uh, I think cats just never... See, my grandmother, she had a cat when uh, I was young, and... It would always attack me. Then my brother got a cat, and I went to his home. And I remember, uh, I might have told this story before, but I was sitting at his computer desk. He'd left, and I don't know if it's because he left. The cat suddenly thought he'd play a prank on me. But while I was sitting at the desk, minding my own business, I had a drink in my hand. This little cat climbed up on the couch, I don't know, like five feet away from me, and dove from the couch and landed on my back, dug its claws in, Freaked me the heck out. I jumped up. I'm holding my glass. I'm spinning around trying to get the cat off me. You can see what's happening to my drink. You can imagine it's just going everywhere. 
My brother got back from wherever he was, and I was like shirtless. I'd throw my shirt in his dryer, and I just like, my hair's a mess. I'm like, your cat attacked me. So I don't know, cats and I just never got on. So we, we now have a cat. My family overwhelmed me. And uh, this, Laura Davis sent, sent us this book because, yes, uh, admittedly, this does kind of look like our cat. This is uh, Henry Le Chat Noir. The existential musings of an angst-filled cat. It's full of lots of little uh, anecdotes from the cat. Let's see if I can find uh, one here. Here's, here's one. This one's kind of cute. Uh, let's see if I can focus the camera so you can actually read this. All right. Well, yep, there, that's better. And focus, camera. Sartre wrote, all human actions are equivalent, and all are on principle doomed to failure. This is an eerily, eerily prescient commentary on the tardiness of my breakfast. Yes. Yes. Uh, I feel like the cat does show us affection sometimes, but generally when he wants food. When I watch you go about your activities, make no mistake about my intentions. I am not curious or coy. I am judging you. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that judgment from our cat frequently. But he's not going anywhere. He's moved in. He's now, uh, he gets a lot of affection from the rest of the family. I'll, I'll say that. All right, uh, is there anything else I wanted to tell you? Oh, yeah, there was something else I wanted to mention. I'm not going to be at PAX. Uh, I've been asked, am I going to PAX Unplugged this year? Uh, BGGCon was the last convention that I was going to be attending this year. PAX Unplugged is a fantastic show, though. Uh, I'm just not going to be able to be there myself. Uh, I've done a lot of travel this year, and, and the thing about going away on trips and attending conventions is it means I'm not here making videos. So if I was at PAX Unplugged, I wouldn't be making this right now, and wouldn't that be a loss? Right? So, uh, no, I have, I have a number of tutorial videos to, uh, to get working on. So, maybe I'll hopefully get to PAX Unplugged again in the future. It's, as I say, it's a really, really fun show, and I know a lot of my friends are going to be there, and I'll enjoy watching the pictures as they're, they're having a, a good time. Hey, I just noticed uh, another super chat from Socrates RR. Also, like another dancing pair saying fist bump. I don't really under understand the animation thing. Someone who knows what that's all about, you let me know in the comments and we'll I'll read that later and figure out what's, what's going on uh, with that. Okay, um, was there something else? Oh, I, I'll mention uh, BGGCon quickly because I was just there. That was the most recent convention I was at and it was amazing. Oh my goodness, what a fantastically fun time uh, I had. I really enjoy that convention. Um, I've mentioned this before, talking about this particular convention, but one of the things it has is a big, giant room where a lot of people go to game. Now, if you don't want to be in a giant crowd like that, that's no problem. There's lots of other satellite rooms you can go to as well. But I do enjoy going to the big hall where everyone's gaming. It's just rows and rows of tables of people gaming. Because there's something really... Well, I mean, you, you're at a table with, say, a group of four or five people, and you're playing a game, and you know how games are. You eventually, you end up like this, you know, kind of in your own world, just staring at the board, trying to figure out what to do next and how to not come in last place. And while you're brain sweating, you know, you just thinking away. And then in the middle of that, sometimes I'll just sort of lift myself up from the table and I'll look around and I just see like literally thousands of people, like just all these people to the left, to the right, as far as I can see that way, all obsessed with the same thing that I am. And there's just something really heartwarming about that. You know, it just, um, I don't know. I, I, would, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure many of you have, have encountered this growing up, maybe playing board games and not really feeling like it's the coolest thing in the world. Like, not everyone would understand or get why you're into it. it seems like an awful lot of work. Why don't you just play video games? Uh, not that there's anything wrong with video games, but um, to, to be surrounded by people who's, who get it, <laughs> or, or people who are getting into the hobby and are just starting to get it and sort of embrace the joy of the whole thing, it's really, uh, really lovely. And of course, you can, you can kind of uh, experience that in a lot of different conventions, the, the sense of crowd. But this is a different kind of crowd because it's, again, you're just surrounded by people playing games. And that's, that's really, um, really a special kind of cool thing. Anyway, it was a wonderful time uh, there. And, and all the staff that put on, I mean, you have tons of volunteers there running all kinds of events and just making sure everything runs smoothly. A huge congratulations to them, to Scott, to Lincoln, to all the people involved. Jeff Anderson just did a great, great job. So if, if you've never been to BGGCon, you're like, well, would I enjoy that convention? I highly recommend it. I know I do work with uh, BGG, so you could accuse me of some bias there, but genuinely, it's just a fantastic uh, convention. They have BGG Spring as well, which is a smaller affair, um, and it's also a lot of fun. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Anything else? Oh, I'll mention one more thing about BGG. They have their support drive going right now. So if you'd like to support BGG with a donation, you'll find on the front page 
just a banner at the top. It's very really simple. You click on there. You can PayPal, I think. There's maybe one other way. You might be able to use a credit card. I'm not sure. But the main thing is if you use the Board Game Geek website, if, if your life would be a little less full without it, then um, that's a way to go and show your support, toss a couple coins into the, into the jar, and, and just help the site because there's a lot of... A lot of stuff going on behind the scenes there, um, and uh, it all takes a lot of energy and time and, yes, frankly, money. <laughs> so, uh, so there, there's my little plug for uh, Board Game Geek as well. And, yeah, I think it's time to dive into some questions. I have some other, I have a little game that we're going to play a little bit later, all of us together through the live show. But before we do that, I'm going to jump into some questions, and maybe I'll start by just going to some of the questions here in the chat, in case there's any here. And then, uh, you know, I'll jump into the ones I had from, from BGG. All right. Let's see here. So I already see a question from Mary McBride about PaxU, so I, I answered that preemptively. And <laughs> yes, Gil, you've, uh, you've got it right. That is how you use the questions. Good job. Yeah, everyone's now showing me they know how to leave the question. So again, put question in all caps and then the question, and it just makes it easy to find the questions amongst all the comments. So, Lara, sorry, Lazaro Cortez, where is Luke, is the question, and also when will you do another gameplay of a game? I'm actually going to talk about gameplays a little bit later, uh, so I'll save that one. But Luke is, well, Luke right now is upstairs. I believe he's playing a video game. Uh, if you're wondering where he's been on the show, well, he just, he's, he's grown up and he's busy. <laughs> he's got a full life. And uh, the gameplays that I did with the kid, now, uh, Andrea... She's, also, she's not just grown up, she's not living at home right now because she's working in the U.S. So uh, that keeps her from, from being on the channel as well. The gameplay videos, well, like I said, I'll talk about this a little bit later. I have a, a little answer for that I'll queued up that we can talk about. But uh, thanks for the interest. Uh, my cat's breath smells like cat food. <laughs> sort of appropriate given the earlier conversation. Asks, any more game night episodes coming with you on them? That was a fun surprise to have them pop up. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed those. It was fun doing that with them. I... When I went there to Los Angeles, we shot a whole bunch, like I think eight or nine in three days. And I'm not sure that all of them have been released yet. I think most of them have. So there might be some from that old batch still left to go. Uh, Lincoln might even be in the chat here. If so, he might know. But the, um, uh, we might do some more again in, in 2020. So if you enjoyed seeing me there, then you might see me again. If you didn't enjoy me, well, you might see me again anyway. <laughs> so there you go. Let's see what else we've got here for questions. So Nahatik asks, any upcoming Euros you've got an eye on? Yeah, um, Marikabo, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, that one does look interesting to me. Uh, by the same designer who did uh, Great Northern Western Trail. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> what's the name of the game? Great Western Trail, there you go. <laughs> I think there was a northern expansion or something, right? Anyway, um, yeah, it, it looks like a, a meaty uh, Euro game, and, and I'm keen to check it out. I did the BGG preview of that at, was it at Spiel? I think it was, and it looked very intriguing. Uh, I don't own it yet, and honestly, I don't know when I would or will add it to my collection, just because I'm kind of swimming in games. So I had a, a, a plan. My plan was to have my unplayed games down to five by the end of the year. So I was getting pretty close. I was down to about 25 games. And then Spiel and BGGCon happened and I might have bought a few more games. So <laughs> I've got some catching up to do. I would just like to, you know, I'd like to just once get that close to having all my games played. That would be, that'd be nice. All right, let's see here. So Kabuki Kid asked, this is an interesting question. Kabuki get asks, does the Reckoner still get a lot of play in your house? I was asked, uh, someone asked me a question the other day about Takedo. No, Takenoko, sorry, Takenoko, and said, hey, I don't know what, uh, I, is, is this still going? What's going on? I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm back. I don't know if you're back. I don't know what's going on anymore. The power went out, just so you know. Let me see if I can... Oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted to do. <sighs> okay. Let me see if... We're back? It's, it's, it's working? <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. That was unexpected. I don't know what this means now for people watching it after the fact. If there's going to be this 10-minute gap or if you're going to see 10 minutes of me just sobbing at the table here. I think it just went out, of course, because the power died. 
the power died. That's where I went. The power died. Everything got really dark. I started to cry. <laughs> now I'm back. Thank you so much for waiting around here. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to break up the chat. I can see now, you know, why professional operations like, you know, Asmodee, they have, you know, a team of people who are there helping to run things behind the scenes. It would definitely make things easier. My wife, Christy, yelled down, so how about getting that generator? <laughs> We've been talking about getting a generator for a while. Okay, so let me, let me somehow <laughs> get this show back on the road. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it's winter here in uh, Candle Land, and we're not even really having a storm right now. Uh, we've had a little bit of storming around today, but right now it's fine. We shouldn't be losing power. But... Okay, I think I was trying to answer questions. Oh yes, I was trying to answer Kabuki Kid's question before everything disappeared. And I feel so bad. I noticed there was a couple more Super Chats. And anytime people do a Super Chat, I want to call it out and say thank you for you know taking the time to throw a little tip in the tip jar here with me. It's I really appreciate it. Um, it's a, it's a very nice thing, and, and, and honestly, it's like you know it's, it's a little motivator to keep going here, even when the going gets tough. Okay, so this what this does mean, unfortunately, is I lost like I lose all the questions now that you guys had asked before. Okay, the last question I, I see here is. What game would you recommend for casual players to get started and for regular players? That's from Lazaro Cortez. So if you asked a question before that, feel free to ask it again, and I will, I'll try to get to it. Okay, so let me answer the question from Kabuki Kid, which was, how often do I play uh, a game? There was a game. The Reckoners. The Reckoners. Thank you. Um, and I was saying that uh, I got asked the same question about Takenoko on my Takenoko video recently, and I said, you know, I kind of hesitate to talk about how often hit the table because, now this might not be fair, but my assumption is a person's asking because they're curious to know if it, the game had staying power for me. Like, you know, is this something that you would still play? Do you still recommend it? Or was it kind of like that was a, you did a video for it, you were interested then, but you, you kind of moved on. The problem with me is that my gaming habits are a mess these days. Um, I don't have like a regular game night anymore. And oftentimes when I am playing a game, I am thinking about games that I might feature on the channel, or as I said, I, I sort of have this ambition to get down to five unplayed games in my collection by the end of the year. So I am trying to sort of play through games that I, new games that I have. So if I was to say to you, no, I haven't played The Reckoners in like months and months and months, I wouldn't want that to be misinterpreted as anything other than my schedule's not <laughs> cooperating, you know? And my schedule's fine. I'm not complaining about my schedule. It's just, uh, I'm not getting back to many games in my collection that I enjoy, and so the frequency at which I play games is not really a measure of how much I enjoy or appreciate a game. So I always feel a little funny about answering that question because I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want the game to uh, be given the wrong, I wouldn't want to give the wrong impression with the game by my answer. Does that kind of make sense? Like I talked to some, uh, I have some friends, and they like, they have all kinds of game nights, and they play regularly, and they play the same games over and over and over again, and I, I, don't, I don't really have a lot of room for that in my, my life right now. Um, oftentimes, like BGG Con, boy, I got a ton of gaming in there. That was awesome. It was a fantastic, just <laughs> game after game after game there. But in my day-to-day, -day, no, it's, it's a lot of rules reading and, and playing games occasionally, and oftentimes playing games with my family. So I, I pick games that I think would be a good fit for that. So like me and, and me and my wife Christy and my son Luke, we've been playing a Paranormal Detective uh, quite a bit recently and going through the different scenarios and cases in that. So I would love to play The Reckoners, but Paranormal, Detec Paranormal Detectives is what we're in, into right now. All right, let me jump over here to uh, the stream again. Actually, let me, let me try to answer a couple of questions from the BGG chat. So I mentioned that I, I did get some uh, questions over on the Watch It Play Guild. If you're not already subscribed there, um, then can I suggest you do. It is over on the, well, actually the easiest way to find it is to go to the link in the description of this video, maybe. <laughs> if there's not one there, just search for Watch It Played Board Game Geek Guild. It'll come up as the first link. And uh, I don't post a ton there, so you won't get inundated with a whole bunch of threads, but certainly feel free to create threads there if you'd like, and I'll engage if it's a topic of interest to me, but it's also where I announce usually prior to a live show that I'm going to be doing a live show, and I'll take some questions there early. So I have a question here from Edwin Suave, who says, 
What drove you to start Watch It Played? And are you still driven by the same factors? I like that. What drove you? Kind of like, what drove you to drink? <laughs> like, um, well, you know, in a, in a funny parallel, it was kind of like being driven to do something because I was uh, back in 2011. I had just recently, well, a few years before that, I'd been really falling down um, the rabbit hole of board gaming, modern board gaming at that time. And I was infatuated with it. And I was listening to podcasts and I was watching. YouTube channels about this was back when you could watch every YouTube channel about board games and pretty much listen to every podcast about board games and keep up with all of it. And I loved it. I was just consuming that stuff because I lived in a place where there wasn't a lot of gamers around me. I'd moved to this small town and didn't really know a lot of people. And so this was a way for me to feel kind of connected to the hobby and I craved that on a bigger level. I'm like, yeah, I want to do something. I want to put something out there. So what really drove me was the desire to kind of feed this passion I had for the hobby and also. I don't know, uh, share some of it with other people in my own way. And I, I definitely felt at the time that, well, I'm not seeing a lot of people teaching games uh, on video and uh, showing them being played. Maybe that's something I could do. So that's kind of what drove me to it. And then once I started, I, I fell in love with it. I really loved doing it. Uh, I didn't anticipate doing live shows like this. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't anticipate any of this, honestly, at the, at the time. Uh, it was something I was doing because I just felt I had to do it. I really wanted to participate in some way in, in the larger board gaming hobby and um, it really allowed me to achieve that goal of feeling like I'm a part of the bigger gaming community which is a, a pretty special feeling and now I get to spend time with all of you. Like if it wasn't for cardboard and plastic, you and I wouldn't be spending time right now together which is kind of a crazy and wonderful thought all mixed up in one, right? Uh, so Edwin asked here, am I still driven by the same factors? Yeah. Um, I am. Uh, have any of the factors changed? Not really. Um, I mean, now I do it full time, so it's, it's my job. So that I have to, it has to make fiscal sense, what I'm doing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Which again, I really appreciate those super chats. Um, it, it's, I have to make decisions around that, certainly. But it hasn't really, I mean, one of the major principles that I set for myself is that I would feature the games I want to feature. And I've never really given up on that. Um, I sort of made a, a series of 13 rules when I first started the channel. And those have been kind of my guiding principles all the way through this. And they, I still remain, I would say, pretty true to those. So I would say 100% true to them, actually. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so th th that I think has allowed me to evolve the channel as time has gone on. But again, stay true to the original principle and, and spirit of the thing. Edwin, thanks for the, uh, the question there. Let me just jump over here into the, uh, the chat and I'll answer a couple of questions here. And also, don't forget, I do have a game that we're going to uh, play together here on the channel. And uh, there's going to be a contest draw at the end for the contest I talked about earlier. Let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, I saw Falcon Ash K leave. See you later, Falcon. Oh. Uh, oh, no, I see Kabuki Kid saying that the stream was frozen, but that was just when the power went out. So we're, we're back. Everything's good there. Oh, and I'm, look, I'm seeing some... Uh, Oh, thank you. Yannick Samara, thank you so much for the, uh, the super chat. <laughs> $2 for the generator. Yep, honey, we're going to get that generator. The only problem with the generator is there. They can be super loud. So as soon as that thing kicked on, it might be the only thing you'd hear, just a loud, rumbling roar, which I'm not sure if that'd be, that'd be better, but I uh, appreciate it. And thank you, Mark Harker, uh, also for the super chat donation. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Vanessa G is wondering, will you be doing a new vlog anytime in the near future? I hope so. Uh, I've been, a fair bit of travel happened in November. And I have, a lot of my vlogs early on were travel vlogs. If, if you're wondering uh, what's being talked about here, the vlog, I have another channel, YouTube channel called uh, youtube.com slash Rodney J. Smith. And I have a series of vlogs that I post there. Not so much about board gaming, although board gaming comes into it. It's just more about my life and living on this uh, weird little island that I'm on. and. Uh, and my weird little life. <laughs> so uh, if you want to check that out, I'd love for you too. You can go uh, subscribe over there at Rodney J. Smith. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I have been away from doing the vlogs because I have not wanted to, uh, I just didn't want to do a bunch more vlogs that are just about travel. I felt like I'd done a bunch of them where I was traveling and I honestly prefer to do them when I'm at home and I just haven't been home. And when I have been home, I've had to get to work on stuff from Watch It Played. So. More vlogs, definitely. I'm not done with the vlogs. All right, another question. Uh, so, oh, Kevin, I appreciate this question. Kevin Flannery asks, when will you be doing part two of your overpowered episode of Table Talk Back? Thank you for asking. I'm glad that you're uh, anticipating that still. I know it's been a while. 
My hope is to do it in December. So I have an, a series called Table Talks that I used to do here on this channel, but now I've started doing it over on the Board Game Geek channel. And I really appreciate everyone who's been and watching those and enjoying them and participating. It's just they're almost uh, doing too well. I get so many comments on them now, and part of the table talk back is I go through all the comments, and I try to curate them down, and then come up with thoughtful responses to them, and it's becoming a... Do you hear a noise? The sound of something rolling around? That is my cat upstairs uh, hitting a ball around, and if it continues, I'm going to have to leave and do something about it. <laughs> um, actually, let me send a, a text to my wife right now. Uh, Oh boy, this is, this is good, good material we got here. You know what? Um, hey, Christy! I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to go tell her. I'm gonna have to go tell her. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, just, uh, just pretend the power went out again. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> You'll still be able to hear me because the mic's on, so we're going together. Um, maybe I can just find, find the ball. Where's the cat? Elvis, where are you? Where's, where's this cat? Okay, so we're on, you're with me on the main level. Where's the cat? Luke, do you know where the cat is? Say hello to the live stream that we're watching. I'm on the live stream right now. Uh, can you find the cat and just whatever that ball that he's got? Oh, I, I found it. He's hiding underneath the Christmas ornaments. <laughs> just, just make this, no, just take this and make it hide. He's knocking around the floor, so it's rolling everywhere. Oh. Okay, boy, this live stream stuff is great. Okay, I'm almost Almost back, okay. So, um, remember earlier I said, boy, we're gonna do this like every two weeks? How about we do this, do this never again? How about, that? <laughs> How about that? Okay, I'm really sorry. All right, so let's, um, was I even answering a question? What was going on? Oh yeah, table talk back. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot to get through them. And, and this one had, I thought, such, such a good response and reaction, I wanted to, not just rush something out. So I'm slowly going through all the comments and I'm gonna do my best to get that done in December. If not, then I promise in January. Uh, Table Talk is not done. I really enjoy doing that series. Um, okay, Gil, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. I see another dancing pair. It says, hey you, I don't know why. It's great that it is dancing. Okay. Huh. Uh, okay. Robert Christ is asking a question. BGG released a video of Catan demoing a scenario for C and K, Cities and Knights, I'm guessing, called Legend of the Conquerors that came out in 2019, but it's not available in the US or in English. No one that could be, I have no idea. I know nothing. Sorry, sorry, couldn't help with that. Oh, Kabuki Kid wants to know what have you done to cats in a previous life? Uh, it's not something not good, I guess, which is why I'm now suffering and paying for it in this life, apparently. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm glad uh, Ox Oxyradar said, uh, nice overlay. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the overlay. I wanted to spice up the live show a little bit, and I thought maybe doing some of the preloaded questions like this might be a fun way to do it. So I got another question here. This one's also from Edwin Suave. Do you regret any decisions you made regarding Watch It Played, and if so, what were they? Oh, I regret this live stream. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, I'm having a good time. I hope you are, too. It's just a little more chaotic. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but my tutorial videos and other videos tend to be... Um, somewhat organized and planned and you know they follow a, a format and uh, I kind of like things that way, I do. So um, do I regret any decisions? Um, that's always a funny thing, right? Because if you said, do you regret anything in your life? I'm sure I could list things, but I don't know. You know, I even if I look back on some of the older videos, like when I had the green screen behind me and the purple tablecloth, I look at those videos now and think, what were you thinking, Rodney? I know at the time I was thinking, well, maybe I'll put something on that green screen, which was terrible idea and I never did it that was one good choice but even when I think back on some of those decisions I mean everything I did along the way taught me something I learned things I mean I worked within what I had at the time and I did the best with what I could at the time and uh, it doesn't doesn't mean every decision I made was was the best one but I, I sort of did the best I could I did things as thoughtfully as I could, or at least tried to. So um, all of those little steps, you know, and all the support I got from so many people, many of you who are watching here have been watching for several years, the comments and the encouragement, all of that allowed me to sort of get where I am today. And I don't consider myself today where it's 
at for watch it played. Like it'll keep going. This is just another day in the evolution and continued journey of whatever this is, right? So um, I don't really have any specific regrets. I think in large part because I did create that those set of, I call them Rodney rules, at the beginning of the channel that were sort of my guiding principles and I just stuck to those things. So anytime I was tempted to maybe go in a different direction or rush something or do something that uh, I might have felt pressured to do otherwise, I just went, okay, what are the principles? What are the rules I follow? And I just follow those and that would always get me sort of back on track. So let me get to another one of these questions here from the BGG Guild. Uh, Ryan Ballinger, what's one thing all rule books should contain? I feel like saying something snarky, like, you know, the rules to your game, because some, <laughs> some rule books, you just wonder if they realize that was the point of the rule book. Um, no, I, a more sincere question, you should have a picture of every component and a, a name on every component. Uh, it's really difficult reading a rule book when they don't do that. Sometimes they'll just list the components, but they don't show what they are. And you're trying to read the rule book and you can't, you, you don't have a context for what they're talking about because you can't even visualize it in any way. So I, I know sometimes people feel like, well, they don't need to see pictures of it. They bought the game. It's right there. Here's a, here's a list of, of the components. But when you've got a series of different types of cards and tokens and stuff, it's just not, it's not obvious. And I think it's one of those things that, unfortunately, designers, publishers take for granted because they know the game. So there's no confusion for them, but they forget what it's like if a person opening the box for the first time has never seen any of these components and doesn't know what any of them are for. I think that's a pretty big thing. Uh, I think having a, uh, an index uh, to look up things is, is helpful if you can. And examples. Um, I, I really, I mean, obviously you can't over, you shouldn't, you don't want a rule book to be like 50 pages long, right? And the more examples you put in, the, the bulkier the, the rule book gets. But um, I think examples, again, help provide a context for the stuff that you're trying to explain. And I think if you're going to give an example, always give the tough examples. Don't give the easy examples. The, the, the best use of that real estate in your rule book is to show that weird edge case scenario or those complicated situations and, and put them there. I mean, there's lots, of, there's lots of things that go into a good rule book. Those are just a couple of quick things. All right, let me jump over to the, uh, the live chat. I'll answer a couple of quick questions in the live chat, and then I'll show you the game that we're going to play together. All right. So Chrissy Stern with a very kind Super Chat donation. Appreciate that, Chrissy. Would like to know, will I be at Dice Tower West? I, so that would, I'm assuming that's in 2020, right? Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't lined out my trips for 2020 yet. I'm gonna start thinking about that very soon. Because uh, this 2019, I did a lot of travel, and I, I, uh, I did that in part just to try to figure out where my breaking point is. <laughs> How much can I take on? Do all this travel, and at the same time, hopefully, maintain the same level of output with the videos, right? And I think in 2019, I managed to do that. Uh, I guess you kind of have to be the judge of that. Uh, but I, I hope to um, scale back a little bit in 2020 to allow myself to have a little more breathing room on the video side because there's other types of videos I'd like to create for the channel and someone asked earlier about like gameplay videos which we haven't done and I'd like to get back to doing some of those so um, I would certainly not be against going to Dice Tower West let's just put it that way it'd be very expensive that you know the, the problem with travel is coming from Canada every flight is is super expensive so again I kind of have to treat a lot of the things that I do now um, you know with a not, not everyone does, right? Everyone has to treat <laughs> everything they do fiscally responsibly, right? Um, but when I, when I leave to go on a trip like that, I am not doing work at home. I'm basically losing money uh, every time I go on a, on a convention trip, if you want to think of it that way. So I have, to be, I have to be careful and thoughtful about which trips I go on and which ones I don't, if that makes sense. All right. Um, let's see here. So Talon Gray asked, do you have any pets. <laughs> well, I hope you were here earlier uh, when I was chasing my cat around the house. Oh, or maybe you weren't and you were spared that. Either is good, I suppose. Um, okay, Robert Christ would like to know, favorite ice cream flavor and brand? Uh, I don't know brand. I don't, I'm not really, uh, I don't have real brand loyalty around ice cream, but my favorite is Heavenly Hash. So chocolate and more chocolate and some more chocolate. That's what I like. Um, um, so, my cat's breath smells like cat food, <laughs> asks, I love that name, asks, Edwin's question made me think, what did you do before Watch It Played? Was it hard to transition from a regular job to YouTube? Now, this is a story I've told a number of times on the live show. I, I don't mind asking, of course, but I just don't want to retread ground that maybe other people have uh, heard before. So, I'll summarize it quickly. I worked with the uh, federal government of Canada. I was a finance officer. I did that for about 10 years. 
And that was my job. Was it difficult to transition? No, because after I left that job, I, I sort of ran my own small business for a while before I jumped to watch it played. And I don't know, I fell in love with, that, with what I was doing. The, the problem, problem, the thing is, I didn't know it was going to be my full-time job when I first got into it. Uh, I did feel early on, like within the first six months of Watch It Played, that there was a potential here for something. I didn't know what. Um, and I didn't know if it would be supported or not, so I had to kind of keep working at it and see if it would prove out in the long run. Uh, the transition was not difficult, again, because I just felt an immediate... I don't know, I, feel, I felt an immediate attachment to what I was doing, and I felt... Uh, such a wonderful and generous response from people who are watching and enjoying it that it felt right. Uh, thanks for the question. Okay, so I am going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you a game. <laughs> I'm going to show you a game. Let me just scroll down to where the next question will be, and I'll I'll just pause the uh, the scroll there. Uh, okay, okay. So what I wanted to show you for a game, I'm, I'm going to jump away from the comments. I'm not going to see comments for a little bit. Actually, before I scroll away, let me just make sure there's no more Super Chats I need to give a shout out to in case you know the power goes out again. Okay, no, we're good. All right, so let me see. I'm going to show you this game, which maybe some of you are familiar with. It's called Linky. Have you heard of Linky before? Let me, uh, let me show you a little a, a closer up version of it. Here it is. This is Linky. Um, they yell out loud the Link party game. The yellow, no, sorry. They yell out the Link party game, is what it's called. And this is from uh, Big Potato Games, and they sent this along, and I thought, this could be fun to, uh, to kind of do together on the live show. We're not going to play according to the official rules. We'll have to do sort of a modified version. Oh, I'm realizing I have to actually have the chat up for this um, to shout out sort of little winners as we go. So I'm going to modify the rules slightly for this. This game comes with, it's actually pretty cool, the insert here has got you know, two decks of cards, but one of them comes in its own little box, and they call it Linky to Go. So you can just put this in your pocket, and you got everything you need to play, play the game. So, Linky, 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 Linky. Where do I have the questions? Oh, I have, actually, I got some questions out earlier. Here we go. So here's some questions. So the, the, the decks of cards, they all have uh, letters on the backs of them, and the letters will spell Linky. And so the way the game works is you have one person who reads the questions, like myself, and then you divide everyone up into two teams. And so the question asker, uh, the question presenter, me, uh, will read out four questions. Uh, let me give you an example of one. Is this a good one? Sure. So here's the first question. What kind of cartoon animals are Roger, Peter, Jessica, and Bugs? So you would, and don't say it in, this, in the stream, what you would do is you'd write down, your team would talk together, like, what do we think it is? And you'd write down what you think the answer is to that. So go ahead and write down if you want, or just track it in your brain. But I recommend writing it down. Write down the answer to that question. Now I'm going to read a second question. Which type of bird did Noah send away from the ark to look for land? All right, testing your Bible knowledge there a little bit. So if you think you know the answer to that, you write that down, that word. And so what you're looking for, there's going to be four questions and four answers. And you're looking for the link between the four answers. What's the commonality between all four of these things? And so you want to be the team that shouts it out first. So you're sort of solving four little mysteries to solve the one bigger mystery. And you try to do it first. So um, yeah, I see some people here who are <laughs> shouting out the um, uh, answers to the first one. So yes, rabbit is the answer to the first question. So again, normally you keep this quiet. So what I thought I would do is I will read out the questions and then I'll watch in the chat to see if anyone gets the final answer. And then I will, I will applaud your uh, success in getting it first in the chat. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, the second one I already asked, uh, so hopefully you have the answer for that. I'm going to read the third question. In 1988, it was made illegal to do what on a plane? Okay, so think about what that answer is. So now you should hopefully have three words, and you're looking for the combination between the three things. I'm not seeing an answer Yet, that is the correct answer. And there's actually four questions. So after I read the fourth question, if neither team had gotten the right answer, or if no one here gets the right answer, there's a clue, like a bonus clue. And then if you can't figure it out from there, uh, well, then no one gets the, the card. But if someone doesn't get the card first, they would get this letter, and they're trying to get enough cards to spell Linky first. And if you get duplicates of letters, you can trade them in to take cards from other people or to get a card you don't have and so on. All right, so I'm going to read out question number four. At a carnival, you might come across an indoor maze called the Hall of something. And the something is the, the fourth word. So there you have it. You have your four 
Oh, Mark Harker gets it. He wrote magic and brackets magician. Magician was the answer. Good job. So Mark did get it. Very good. So that's, that's how Linky works. Let's do a couple more of these. That's kind of fun, right? We'll do a couple of these, and then we'll get back to some more questions. All right, let's see if... Uh, okay, sure, this looks fun. One of Dr. Seuss's most beloved characters is an extra tall cat who always wears a what? So think what the answer is. And again, you don't need to show this answer out in the chat. In fact, you might want to keep it to yourself as to not give away the answers so you can figure out the final answer. Number two. What item of clothing can be worn around your head or neck to keep you warm? Hmm. I know a little something about this because <laughs> I was going through these just yesterday with Christy. We pulled out our box of winter wear because the winter is coming. According to moms who want their kids to eat more veggies, what helps you see better in the dark? Not just moms. My dad said this to me too. According to moms or dads who want to keep their kids or want to who want their kids to eat more veggies, what helps you see better in the dark? Anyone have the answer yet? I'm looking. No one's figured out the link yet between these answers. I'm gonna read out question number four. What famous songwriter penned I've got you under my skin and I get a kick out of you? It's something porter. So the first name, something porter. Eric! Majet gets it. It is snowman. That is the link. So we had hat, scarf, carrots, and the first name was Cole, C-O-L-E, but C-O-A-L. Cole gives you snowman. Well done. Well done, Eric. One more? Should we do one more? Let's do one more. All right. What is the most common last name in the U.S.? A little clue you might hear at the beginning of every uh, Watch It Play episode. All right. Number two. Number two is another, another spiritual one here. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit make up the holy what? You tell me. All right, question number three. What did Alice fall down leading her to Wonderland? I'm watching the... And I know you guys are on a bit of a delay, too, so I, I got to keep that in mind here. All right, so the first question was, what is the most common last name in the U.S.? The second question was, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit make up the holy what? And what did Alice fall down leading her to Wonderland? Oh, someone got the answer. Pete Shirey, nice job. Yes, the matrix is the answer. The fourth question would have been, which prefix comes from the Greek word for new? You'll often see it before words like natal. Neo would have been the answer. Well done, Pete. Good stuff. Okay, everybody. So that's Linky. Kind of fun, right? And uh, it's a sort of game, like... Kind of reminds me of the game Concept, which is another game that I think, if you've played it before, there are rules for keeping points and scoring, and I don't know anyone who plays the game actually doing that. I kind of think Linky's charm is sort of similar. I mean, you can play for points if you want to and trying to collect the cards and numbers, but just sitting around and trying to figure out if you can solve it, I think is just as much fun as playing to win, if you will. All right. Well, Pete, you didn't need the Jaws clues. You, you had it locked down on that one. Good job. <laughs> anyway, so that is, uh, that is Linky, and that is by uh, Potato People Games. No, Big, <laughs> Big Potato Games. And we have kind of a cool thing here. Um, let me see if I can switch over to my other camera so I can show it to you. Let's see if you can see this. Um, up here in this corner, it, it has a person's name and where they're from. So you can actually submit your own ideas to uh, Big Potato Games, and if they like the idea, they might put it in a future printing. So that's kind of fun, right? So this particular printing has a, a bunch of those from other people as well as their, their standard ones. All right, next, more questions. And how are we doing for time? Oh my gosh, we're at 9.30. And I said I was going to try to keep this to an hour. I know we start, started a little late, and we also had that weird power outage, so maybe we'll try to go a little longer. Let me answer a few, more, a few more questions here in the chat. Where were we? So Kabuki Kid was just curious, what software do I use to edit with? And yes, I use Premiere. Adobe Premiere. So uh, Geeky Girl Games asked a question, how do you deal with burnout? Reviews have taken a back seat for me in my life because of circumstances like having two small children and depression and anxiety. It's hard to be motivated. You know, actually someone in the, um, is it this one? Nope. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Zach Wilson asked a similar question in the BGG Gill. He said, what do you do to combat game fatigue? Which is kind of a similar type of thing, I think a little bit. Um, 
I mean, there's two different things happening there, maybe. Uh, game fatigue there is maybe just being so into the hobby that eventually you just get kind of tired of it. And I think um, what Geeky Girls Games is asking here is, you know, like, working in the hobby can also burn you out in a certain way. Um, this is kind of a tough one. I, I feel fortunate in a way. Um, you know, earlier we were talking about how I, I don't have regular game days. I don't, um, you know, I, the work kind of keeps me from that uh, somewhat. That helps with the, the game fatigue part of it because I'm always keen to play uh, another game. I would say having been working on Watch It Played, I am just as invested, if not more, in my enjoyment of the hobby uh, as I ever have been, uh, which, is, which is a nice thing to be able to say. I, as far as the, the work of Watch It Played, um, you know, I said this year was kind of a, 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 a trial year in a way to see how much I could fit into a year and come out the other side of it and sort of figure out where my limits are. And I feel like I found them. I found them this year. Um, and so in the coming year, I'm going to scale back a little bit. I've made some adjustments and changes to the show and things I'm doing on it sort of behind the scenes that I think will help give me a little more breathing room. The thing that really helps me is when I feel I have other creative outlets. Uh, that really helps me um, continue at the rather rigorous pace I do watch it played at because I have those other outlets. So one of those outlets was doing the vlog. Starting that other channel at the beginning of last year was a creative outlet for me. Uh, it let me shoot a different kind of video, something that wasn't, um, this, wasn't the same at all as anything else I was doing. Uh, earlier this year as well, I kind of got into the, fell down this rabbit hole of learning magic tricks and getting into that as a hobby. And uh, I'm no good at it, by the way. Please don't ask me to do magic tricks if you see me at a convention. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I've enjoyed delving into that and having something else for my brain to sort of tinker at and, and to sort of look forward to when I'm done with the work stuff for Watch It Played. So that variety is good. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of my answer to it. But I can certainly appreciate that, um, you know, the amount of work that goes into this kind of... look. I was I was struggling a little bit talking about the work of doing a YouTube channel because, like you know, there's people out there who coal mine. <laughs> like that's, you know, um, it's all work. But I, I, it's it's I always feel a little self-conscious uh, talking about the work that's involved in in doing this because um, primarily, of course, I want you to see the fun part of it, not the, you know, you don't need to be, you don't need to be burdened with uh, the toll of the work uh, that it might take on me. That's not not your concern. But I, I'd certainly have empathy for other content creators and media folks who have that feeling, right? And are wondering, how, how do I sort of revive and keep myself refreshed? It's a challenging mix. And I think finding the right balance between your work and also what fulfills you personally is really important. I also think, boy, I'm getting a little bit rambly here. There's a temptation to chase metrics. There's a temptation to look at stats and go, what is it that people want to see? How do I make everyone happy? And when you're doing that, you're not generally not necessarily doing what would make you happy. And I, obviously I take into consideration hopefully what people will enjoy seeing. But I also said, look, I'm not worried about having explosive growth. I'm gonna slowly build this thing, doing the thing that I enjoy and then hopefully over time, if I'm doing something that's half decent, other people who would enjoy what I do will find it. And that will hopefully allow me to keep doing it in the long run rather than sort of chasing what, what do I think would be popular and what would be, you know, kind of again, explosively interesting to folks. Which is, you know, I mean, everyone has to uh, apply different strategies to their, to their uh, situations. So that's, that's how I did it. Okay. Uh, Shorty Dance would like to know, have you tried uh, stand-up paddle boarding? I think you'd enjoy it since, you know, I haven't, but I would like to try it and I think I would enjoy it. And I thought this year would be the year that I bought a paddle board, but I think this year, again, with the travel and stuff, it just didn't happen, but next year. Next year, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I see that you're a huge fan of it. So it's uh, on your recommendation. That's another recommendation that I will, uh, I will try it out. Okay. <laughs> I see I'm in the part of the chat here where I was chasing the cat around. Ugh. So Jessica Smith would like to know, does Elvis climb the Christmas tree? Elvis being my cat. Uh, no, because we don't let him in the room. Um, so we close off our living room during Christmas because he will try to climb the Christmas tree and he'll also try to eat the bulbs. He's still uh, in that cantankerous phase. I'm hoping that as he gets older, he'll mellow out and there'll be a little less of that. Um, Talon Gray would like to know, what's your favorite game? I don't know. I used to answer Kemet with a, a moment's hesitation. I have a hard time saying that because I haven't even played Kemet in like two years. 
Um, <laughs> so I feel weird saying my favorite game is a game I haven't played in a couple of years, but uh, I don't know. I also don't want to cheat you of an answer. So I will tell you that, I'll tell you what my favorite game of 2019, how about that? I would have to say Watergate, I think. I think Watergate would have to be my favorite game of 2019, yeah. Awesome, awesome game. And Mansions of Madness, second edition, still very much up there for me, too. And you'll notice in the live shows, I'm, I'm loosening up a little bit. I used to not talk about my opinions on games. I'm, I'm loosening up a bit for the live show, so. <laughs> Don't be too shocked if I give a few opinions on here. I know it's not my usual thing. All right. Um, Callan Gray would like to know what your least favorite game is. Well, that's something I'm not going to answer. Uh, so I don't mind sharing opinions if they're sort of positive or things that I like. Um, not to say I won't be critical of certain things, but I'm not interested in sort of, I don't know, dumping on a game just because I can. Uh, I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather, I'd rather share the games I'm excited and interested in. Uh, my feeling is with so many games releasing every year, with 3,000 new games release a year, uh, maybe even more, if you want to kill a game, just don't talk about it. You don't have to give a negative review, just don't review it. <laughs> People not talking about your game will kill it quicker than anything else, honestly, in this, in this environment. Uh, okay, let me see what else we got here. Oh, I'm hearing a video is super blurry from one person, but coming in clear for somebody else. That could just be, who knows what. <laughs> it could be on my end, but it can also be on your end. That's always difficult to know. Uh, uh, Pepe, uh, Aragonis says, sorry for slaughtering your last name, wanted to know what kind of business did you run? Well, I just had a small business. Um, I made websites, I shot little videos, like promotional videos for the town here in Montague, and I made pamphlets, a little bit of graphic design, that sort of thing. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump down a little bit here. Um, <laughs> Just because I know we're running out of time. We're a little bit past time. I'm gonna do a couple more questions, is that all right? And then, then we'll wrap up here. Okay, I'm down into the, oh, uh, I, first of all, a quick thank you to uh, Ablady for the very kind, very kind uh, donation in the um, super chat. And you have a question, so let's answer that. Name three people throughout history you'd like to play a game with, and what game would it be? <sighs> Ooh, this, you know, this is one of those questions where, like, can I go have a half hour to think about it? <laughs> I have to answer it right now. Gosh, who would I? Uh, Patrick McGowan, who's the actor from the TV show The Prisoner. And the only reason I'm picking him is just because I'd like to hang out with him and get to know him better. I thought he was a really interesting person. I read a fair bit about him. Uh, so that'd be one of my choices. What game would I play? Oh, I wouldn't, I would just talk to him. <laughs> uh, we could have a game on the table. Uh, maybe I would put, uh, so like maybe the game Conspiracy, you can see his, his show is a little bit like a, but being an ex-spy. Um, who else? Mr. Rogers for sure. Oh, 100%. What game? What game would I play with Mr. Rogers? Something cooperative? Um, maybe Wingspan, actually, or, or Wingspan, that's not cooperative. Wingspan I could see playing with him. Um, what else though? What game would I want to play with Mr. Rogers? Again, like... I would set a table out just for the sake of answering this a game, for the sake of answering this question. I'd put it aside and just go, let's talk. I mean, that would be amazing. Uh, a third person. I haven't seen the movie yet. I have to go see that movie. Um, Mr. Rogers, man, what, a, what an incredible person. I, uh, I grew up watching Mr. Rogers past the point where I realized it wasn't cool. You know, I remember being in school and people, you know, what's your favorite TV show? And as a kid saying, I like Mr. Rogers and realizing everyone else was like watching MASH or like just other, other like, I guess, adult things. And I was still watching Mr. Rogers. Um, I, I don't know. He just, he made me feel um, like he really cared. He was a very special person. Um, okay. Let me see. I, I can't, I, I don't know about third person, third person. I'd be tempted to say... I'd be tempted to say uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, just because, again, his books had such an um, impact on me growing up. I loved it. Oh, Isaac Asimov. Oh, it would be such a toss-up. Ooh. Ooh, maybe I'd go Isaac Asimov, actually. Sorry, J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> because I think Asimov made an even bigger impact on me, uh, his books. Foundation series, fantastic. The robot series, fantastic. Oh, what game? Oh, I don't even know. Again, I like... Any game, a tapestry, a detective, I'd throw any game in front of them. I don't care. I just would immediately push the game aside and talk. I mean, I just, that would be amazing. 
Sorry, uh, Blatty, you gave a great super chat and I gave you probably a terrible answer. I didn't really answer in the spirit. I, I, I got too into the question and then I wanted to answer it realistically, <laughs> even though it's not a realistic question. Okay, uh, Peach, I would like to know, uh, Rodney, have you played Marvel Crisis Protocol yet? And if not, are you interested in it or are you wanting for them to release, just want them to release Punisher? Um, I'm not particularly interested yet. Uh, I have, it's weird, right? Um, we all have different things that we obsess about, you know, uh, different games that kind of catch our attention. And for whatever reason, I love miniatures games and the idea of miniatures games, but I feel like I don't have room in my life for more than one or two at a time. And my miniatures game of choice right now is Warcry by a long shot. I love the simplicity of the rule set, but the, uh, just, just how much game there is there. Uh, despite the fact that they didn't feel like they had to like burden the game with like 20 pages of all kinds of edge case rules and lookup tables and all the rest of it. It's so straightforward and yet has all this room to have these really cinematic games play out in front of you. And the setup's fantastic, the different twists, the objectives, it's such a, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So I'm not really looking for a miniature style game. What's weird about that, where I, where I think the contradiction is in me saying that, is I look over here and I have a whole shelf of games on the wall. So obviously I don't mind having a bunch of games I don't play. <laughs> but with miniatures games, I feel like they're, they're definitely a lifestyle choice, I feel like. And so I, building them, painting them, you know, all that, that thing. So I just kind of keep them at bay. I, I sort of keep all the ones that attract me at bay and just sort of stick with usually one at a time. Uh, I like, I'm seeing people doing some prisoner references. Very nice. I'm not a number, I'm a free man. Very good. If you haven't watched The Prisoner, I highly recommend it. Not the AMC remake, the original from the 60s with Patrick McGowan. Awesome show. Really kind of, first show I watched that kind of blew my mind. It made me go, oh, this is what storytelling can be? Not linear, like kind of wacky and wild and out there, but thoughtful and uh, meaningful. Oh yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, I saw a question here from random Rob, just wondering if I played Omega Virus. I have not played that. Okay, I am going to, I'm gonna say uh, thanks to everyone for the questions in the chat. I'm gonna stop answering questions in the chat. I'm gonna answer one more question here from the BGG crowd. Let me just see, which I forget which one I was on here. I think it was this one. Oh, have you had a chance to play the Seventh Continent? I'd love to hear what you think of it. That's from Odi, o Oddity? Oddity. I have played it. It was an amazing experience. Excuse me, I played it when I was, in, uh, I was visiting a friend and uh, we got into it together and we did not finish the first scenario. Oh my gosh, we lost the first scenario like three times. Then we survived for like four hours wandering around on the island and then realized about four hours in we had just found like the first step of the actual scenario, like the, the thing that you need to find next to progress. <laughs> we were just exploring this wide open island willy-nilly just tooth and nail surviving the thing and uh, really love the narrative it drew out. And uh, if you're, if, I mean, it's a game that's been around for a while now. If you're not familiar with Seventh Continent and you'd like to learn more, uh, keep an eye on the channel. Maybe there'll be something in the near future. Oh, I realize I have a contest I'm doing a draw for, don't I? <laughs> I have to do that before I go too. Uh, oh, and I was also gonna answer this question here. Uh, earlier, someone had asked a similar question. So Todd Warnkin asks, I missed the playthrough videos. Is there any chance they will return? I miss them too. Um, and I apologize that uh, there hasn't been more of them. I know that that's a feature of the show. Uh, you know, someone asked earlier, uh, do I have any regrets? Uh, the one regret might be calling this channel Watch It Played because it kind of implies what the, sh the channel must be. And that's, you know, that's not something I really want to be constricted by, frankly. I'd like to be able to do whatever I want on this channel. Not whatever I want, like within the realms of board games. And um, I, I don't want to ever be feel constricted by the title I chose, you know, eight years ago. But, um, but um, gameplays are a part of the show and they haven't been for, for much of this year. So I would, uh, I'd like to do more and I have a plan for doing more. Uh, and I probably won't be able to execute that plan until the early part of 2020. So it will be different than the, the usual gameplays that you've seen, but hopefully again, within the same spirit of it. And uh, hopefully it'll be something that I can, I can do in a way that I can sustain better than I could the uh, older format. All right, let's see if I find one more question here. Oh, here's a good one too. Uh, George George asks, three years ago you had a stretch goal for a gaming marathon. Yes, I did. The fundraising page no longer shows the stretch goals. Will this ever be fulfilled? Well, first of all, you're right. So my older fundraisers I used to run for the channel, uh, I had all of the files, the pictures and the images and the perks and all that stuff uh, on a, uh, 
space in the, on the internets. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost the rights to that location, so I lost all those files and all those links and everything. So then uh, my, my fundraiser page was just a whole bunch of X's, so I just, I just erased it because it made no sense anymore. But one of the things I said I was going to do was do a gaming marathon, and I still haven't done it. And I kept getting sort of close to it, and then I would always not do it. I have seen some gaming marathons in the past, and I always had a vision for what I wanted it to be, and it was always going to take a little more effort than I at first thought and realized. And it's given, it sort of gave me cold feet every time, like, oh wait, I, I know what I want. I don't know that I can achieve this. I better wait until I can. And that's just sort of kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And uh, I apologize to anyone who supported me in the past and the fundraisers who f made, made me feel like, you know, I, I wasn't good on my word there. Uh, I haven't been good on my word, and I want to make good on my word, and I still plan to. I know it's like, easy to say, but that's why I keep answering this question. Anytime someone asks me this question, I will answer it because I, I, I see it as a, a, there's a regret. There's a regret I have. I regret not uh, fulfilling this uh, promise I made, and uh, I still intend to do it, and I apologize for the, uh, the delays, but uh, I want to do it in the way that will make me happy, <laughs> which hopefully will make it a better event uh, for the sake of that, and I don't know. You notice when I try to do a live show just for an hour, how it goes? <laughs> it's, uh, it can be a little bit chaotic. I don't want that for the game marathon. I want it to be very, like, perfect. So, anyway. Um, okay. Well, maybe this is a good spot to stop. There was a few more questions from the BGG Guild, but I, uh, I really need to, uh, I need to wrap this up here. So, thank you. Thank you again for joining me. And I, before I wrap it up, let, remember, let me remember that I'm going to do a draw. <laughs> My goodness. I'm going to do a draw right now. How do I do this? I do that. Here we go. I am going to do a draw for, where are they? Where are the prizes for these decks of cards from the awesome Magic Apple? If you, look, whether you like decks of cards, they have all kinds of magic tricks there and stuff. If you've ever had an interest in magic, look them up. Check out their website. Um, there's also a, I believe in the description of this video, a link to a, um, uh, sorry, a code you can use if you go to their website and place an order, and it will give you, off of playing cards anyway, it will give you a, a pretty nice discount, and he even throws an extra pack of these with the playing cards. But also, just check out Metatrix. Metatrix are fun. Okay, let me, uh, let me bring up the uh, split view here, boop, boop. and then let me bring up this so I can try to draw our win <laughs> winner and remove some of these reflections. Okay, and, oh boy, oh boy. Can I focus? All right. Hopefully that's focused enough for you to be able to see our winner, our first winner, is... Who's it going to be? Hey, Pepe! You, you had uh, a couple of questions you got answered, and now you've just also won whew, this deck of aristocrat playing cards. Uh, I will send you an email uh, today or tomorrow once I collect myself from this live show, and uh, I'll get your uh, mailing address, and I'll send these out to you. And let's draw winner number two. Can I hit it? Yeah, there we go. Winner number two is Alexandre Hippe. Hippe? You are the winner of deck number two, the green aristocrat playing cards. All right. Thank you, everyone, again, for joining me for another frenetic, crazy, manic live show. I always have fun when I do these, as, as crazy as they make me feel. I always enjoy doing them, and that's in large part because you show up and you have great questions, and you're so supportive as I'm pulling up my hair and things just fall apart around me. I always appreciate it. And some, you know, in the future, we're going to do one of these live shows. It's going to go smooth, and it's not going to be crazy, and it's going to be wonderful as well. But uh, until, <laughs> until the next time... Oh, yeah, here's the, here's the fun part of these things. This always messes up uh, me saying goodbye. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's not going to mess up this time, let me tell you. I am going to be ready. I mean, I technically already screwed it up because I'm doing all this blathering. But here we go. Everyone, good night. Thank you for joining me. Until the next episode, thanks for watching. Oh, why does YouTube always do this to me? Okay. So, it gets me every time. When you click on the stop streaming button, it then does a pop-up to say, are you sure? Are you sure you want to stop? I mean, I get why it's asking me, because you, know, you don't want to stop the stream before you're ready to stop the streaming, but I'm ready to stop the streaming. Okay, everyone, until the next episode, thanks for watching.